It's 9 a.m. on a Saturday in Bengaluru. The sun's on its way up and the weather's fairly pleasant. Most of the city is still in bed, catching up on sleep after a long work week. But at Cubbon Park, something curious is afoot. The rush of the early runners and pet strollers is over, and a new tribe is just about walking into the park in small batches of one, two, and more, laden with books, paints and canvases, pens and diaries, a fruit to snack on, with a jute mat or a cotton sheet to lie on, and sometimes even a chair, the kind that folds and unfolds. The first of the tribe has arrived, the second is not too far behind. Then comes the third, and the fourth, here's the fifth, and the next. There is no sign of stopping them. In less than an hour, a section of the park is occupied by readers, writers, painters, crocheters, and origamists, each one quietly engrossed in the application of their choosing. Some are lost in the latest titles, while some leaf through the day's headlines. Some are reading for pleasure for the first time, while others are catching up on long lost reads. Some are completing their step count as they recite prose into cupped hands, and others are introducing children to books and to silence. No matter where they are in their reading journeys, the tribe has gathered here with their stories and poems. They are together, yet alone, each one indulging quietly in creative activity. Some are plugged into earphones, humming to themselves while studying a snazzy tree trunk, while others are chipping away at their canvases with pencils and brushes. From monochromes to the whole spectrum, the artists pick their hues. Mats turn into beds, bags become pillows, and empty pages become journal entries. Tuning in to the park's ambient soundtrack that's composed mostly of bird sounds, poems get written and illustrated on laptops, phones, and iPads, by pen on paper, on a typewriter even. Some write letters to friends, postcards to loved ones, or reminders for the self. Some finish up the tedious assignment, and the romantics tie up any loose ends in their debut novels. Another thousand words done on a Saturday morning. Under the shade of another enormous tree, in a circle close by, some are evening out creases on colored paper that metamorphose into palm-sized butterflies guided by two professors who are united by the elegance of the art of origami. They talk in careful whispers while building structures, their hands deftly folding paper with precision. Plucking flowers at the park is frowned upon. What better way then to take home a flower than one fashioned out of folded paper? The tribe is a melting pot of people. What started out as a group of two became a force of 500 in less than half a year from toddlers to senior citizens, from singles and couples to entire families. This was a first for the whole of Bengaluru coming together. To break the routine of anxious Saturdays spent nervously cleaning and laze around instead in a way that actually energizes you, nestled among trees and within books. If you lingered till the end, you would discover the names of all the books that held the tribe together that Saturday, the writing that was given space and shape the artwork, and the array of paper crafts, but only if you stay till the end. For as the clocks strike one, everyone starts to move and stretch on their own without formal instruction, and they move to different corners of the park to socialize after hours of parallel play. Parallel play is a form of play in which children play adjacent to each other but do not try to influence one another's behavior, exactly what the tribe at Kaban does. But now, at the end of play, the writers and painters start talking. Some readers continue to read, while the rest assemble under the wings of a peepal tree, stacking their books to create small towers of novels and non-fiction. The process takes a while. There are hundreds of them. The community's curators wait until most of the readers come together. The books are stacked and the tribe poses for pictures. But instead of cheese, as is customary, they shout out the name of the community that started it all. Kabuli.